Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 98 of Beer Another Shit Podcast Adjunct Series. We are back. This is the uh, look at this beautiful daylight here. This is like we normally do this in the evening, so it's actually a nice little change of pace for us doing something in the late afternoon, getting that daylight in. So today, I'm about to say this evening, today, guys, we have uh, our first ever brewery joining us from the east coast of Canada. For some reason, we haven't really ventured east of Quebec for a podcast yet which is kind of ridiculous now i think about it so uh this is a brewery i've been wanting to talk to for a while um they do something very very spectacular that um i'm a huge huge fan of and i believe i've talked about it on the pod before but i'm glad to actually get the uh first hand info so please guys welcome hoagie from libra and upstreet there he is brought the audience for you bro all right, thanks. That was a that was a great treat. Yeah, <laughs> great to uh, great to meet you, man. Thank you for uh, for hanging out. Appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. No, yeah, really glad to really glad to be here and to you know chat and share a few beers. Yes, sir. Um, this is this is really cool. Like I said, first uh, first East Coast, so this is kind of perfect for me, uh, being that I'm such a fan of what we're going to be starting off with here. So we're going to be talking about your two. So your core, obviously, brewery is Upstreet Brewing, based in uh, Prince Edward Island. On the, uh, yeah, we're on the based. Coast. Yep. Yeah, based out of Charlottetown. Perfect. Uh, and then you have a sub. Would you call it a sub brand, or just kind of like just a, a like a whole brand unto itself for your non-alcoholic products? It's a whole yeah, a whole brand unto itself, basically. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. It's uh, it's definitely taken on a life of its own. It's look. I'm not surprised at all. I'm I'm super stoked to hear about it. Uh, the brand that we're talking about is Libra. Um, we're going to be drinking two different ones, uh, and we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of uh, the range. So let's start off with yours, since uh, what you're drinking there is the OG of uh, of the non-alcoholic products. So do you want to maybe tell us about this beer specifically, um, yeah. what it is, and what you know what's in it, what's going on with it, and then we'll maybe get to the a bit more into how Libra came about. Yeah, for sure. So this is our uh, original uh, non-alcoholic beer. Um, Libra Pale Ale, so it um, yeah it's brewed right here in Charlottetown, PEI, and um, what I think is really you know special about the Libras is that they're all brewed basically like a like a regular craft beer the same as our um, as our Upstreet beers. Right. And uh, you know I'm a big a big hop lover, so um, I get to you know extend some of that passion into the non-alcoholic beer side as well too so we have a, you know a dry hop pale ale which is awesome it's such a spectacular beer that one man like it's it's the what you've been able to do with the flavors like you said you know you're you're a fan of hops so that kind of explains um a lot of that but this specific one was the one that you launched in what what are the hops in this one if you can if you're able to disclose that yeah yeah so we use um amarillo citra and simcoe nice so some some great um, you know well known heavy hitters in the craft beer world. I love it. Best of all, cheers. Pleasure. Cheers. It's just so damn good. Um, hmm. So the pale ale is, and I'm drinking the hazy IPA, uh, which we're gonna we'll talk yeah. about that in, in a second. Um, so Libra, it only started I want to say in 2020. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's right. We launched um, just like in the late fall of, of 2020. Okay. Um, and I mean, it, it had been something we've been working on for um, a few years before okay. that. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears, I guess we'll say, went into the, <laughs> the, the, the recipe development and, I bet. Um, you know, no shame, but a few dump batches as well, too, to, to get it all to or turn out you know what i mean yeah of course. Um, yeah and um and and yeah we um we really i guess for us like have you know having uh when i say us i'm talking about like my uh my business partner mitch um so we you know we've we've had upstreet um since uh 2015 we opened in in june uh of 2015 and um you know, we had, we had been living that, you know, craft beer lifestyle for, for <laughs> quite a while, quite a, quite a number of years, you know, a lot of, you know, 
beer festivals and and late nights and um, everything that everything that comes with that. You know, we yeah. we love craft we love craft beer. We love to drink beers. We love to drink big IPAs. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can't you can't do that all the time. You can't do yeah <laughs> no. every every night or yeah. So um, so really, we wanted to we wanted to find something you know to be, to be able to change it up. Not necessarily you know to to give up on those. Um, on those craft beers, but something, something to sort of, you know, scratch the itch that had, you know, as beer lovers, like, and, and, you know, that we love the flavor of beer too. So, yeah. um, really wanted to come up with a non-alcoholic, uh, alternative, I guess we'll say to that, um, you know, you can have it with lunch, you can have it for breakfast really, <laughs> if, you, if you so choose. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a fact. How did like where did, so it really just came out of that sort of needing something a little bit different that allowed you to get the flavor that you loved from craft beer, but uh, to maybe scale back on that uh, a yeah. little more intense craft beer lifestyle that a lot of people in the industry and adjacent yeah. end up living. Yeah, I would say yeah, I would say that's where it started. You know, from a from a personal perspective, and then uh, from a business perspective as well too. Um, just like keeping an eye on on market trends elsewhere through, you know, through North America and, and through the U S like, um, we really started to no to notice that, um, non-alcoholic craft beer was, um, yeah, you know, starting to become a thing that the craft breweries were, were doing, um, mm. so, you know, some on a small scale, some on a quite, you know, quite la large scale. Um, so yeah, I mean, we we got we kind of got curious about it, and um, you know, just sort of started started researching. Okay, what are some, you know, what are some techniques and some technologies to to make non-alcoholic beer? Um, one thing we noticed uh, right away um, is that a lot of non-alcoholic beer is, is made using very expensive equipment. I guess we'll say like mm. um, like dealkalizers or reverse osmosis. <laughs> Things like that that you know have might cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, which you know wasn't something that we just had. You know we don't have that kind of money just lying around. <laughs> right. So so uh, another thing that sort of drove the innovation for me is that I wanted to you know come up with a way to um, to to brew these beers using our the same equipment and maybe a, a, you know a modified process to the hmm. to what. Um, to what we use for for non-alcoholic beer so um you know i'd say we have we have a one-of-a-kind process for sure for for making um the beer and it's something that you know could be replicated on other brewing systems too which is pretty cool okay and when was this when did you start doing the tests was that like maybe 2019 uh um, yeah it would have been 20 like 2019 yeah 2019 um Actually, I remember. I remember the first pilot batch because it was like Easter weekend of 2019. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then it started all then, and you didn't, you know, obviously hundreds of thousands of, uh, particularly uh, coming into what you know we didn't know was coming, would have probably been a, a bit of a rough thing to to throw a ton of money like that into as well. So I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of. I imagine that you would have had to do a number of batches. Of, and I guess you focused on just the one style to begin with, just the pale. Was the you always? Yeah, yeah, we were just, yeah, we were just focused on one style, just trying, you know, trying to do one thing really well initially, mm. and, and work out the kinks in the in the process that way. So, so yeah, we're kind of focusing on a on a pale ale, just you know, something that's not not too bitter, bit of bit of malt character, nice um, hop aroma as well. So, um, yeah, we started with that, and we actually. Um, by that Christmas, yeah, around Christmas 2019, we released a beer that was called Pace. Um, okay. That, you know, very very little fanfare, but we, you know, we put, we put it out there to see what um, kind of what people thought of it. And it, that one was, it was a 1.1 percent beer, so um, you know, sort of on the on the upper the upper limit of what would be considered a, a non-alcoholic beer. Um, but you know, that was that was sort of where we had landed as far as the process. Like we didn't, hadn't tried to go uh, any lower at that right. point. Um, but it did do well. It was, you know, we did um, sold out within a couple of months. So, yeah. 
Okay. Um, and it kind of got people excited and, you know, um, you know, we'll say we didn't, we didn't put a whole lot of thought like into the brand and, and whatnot. It was really just to, you know, get, get a label design done and, uh, get, slap it on a can, get it into people's hands, get some feedback and whatnot. Yeah. And then what inspired you guys to turn, cause Libra, even just like looking at the branding, it's just so classy with the gold and the, like, it's a really, you've done such a great job with the branding of all of these beers. What made you separate uh, Libra from an upstreet beer that's just the upstreet's, um, you know, non-alcoholic option into a full, fully fledged brand of its own? Like, where did that conversation happen? Yeah, well, I think, I think we just really, we wanted to, um, not that we wanted people to not know about upstreet, but we wanted, yeah, you know, we wanted it to have its own brand and we wanted it to be able to, you know, stand, stand on its own, um, and, and have a look, you know, a, 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 a different look for sure. A, cl a cleaner look, I guess we'll say than yeah. um, our upstreet beers. I mean, right. we're really, we're really proud of our upstreet branding too. And we'll, we'll get into those a little bit later too, but they're, you know, we have a lot of fun with the, with the branding on that side. And, you know, I'll, I'll say the, you know, branding is really important, um, throughout the business. Yeah. Of course. Um, and you know that's um, I'd say that's Mitch's baby, and uh, and then the liquid is my baby. So right. Um, yes, I don't think we clarified yeah. that you are the co-owner and uh, head brewer. Yeah, yeah, that's correct? right. Yeah, yeah the, yeah. the brewmaster and co-founder. Brewmaster yeah, yeah. co-founder. Yes, I didn't say that in the beginning. I apologize. So just to, to clarify. Oh yeah, no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. No problem at all. Okay, so you did all those. So it took. About a year then, I guess, because I remember I heard about this. You have a fantastic, and this is what I love what you've done with the brand. Yeah. You actually had like PR from the beginning. Um, yeah. Which I think is pretty important for a non-alcoholic brand because it does go beyond craft beer at that point. So I, I, it seemed like a really like intelligently calculated move to have that. And they reached out and I was like, yeah, I was just slowly getting into non-alcoholic beer. And first thing I noticed was the branding because I got the... Uh, the pale ale there and i was like geez this is beautiful what is going on here and it was just like i, I used to never understand what non-alcoholic beer was trying to be and so for some some reason around that in 2020 it just kind of clicked for me and i just got it beforehand i always thought everything was this kind of shit and did taste like watery beer but when you really like it's not really trying to be beer it's its own thing um and then i just we fell in love my girlfriend and i fell in love with the pale ale and it was it was just our favorite non-alcoholic beer and it's really helped us being that you know we do this type of beer work just like you know you're around it all the time you've got to be tasting yeah. things uh every day you're in a tap room you know someone comes in oh let's have a beer and you just end up drinking when you're not supposed to or whatever um oh yeah right i can imagine it's 10 times worse for you you know we try to balance our drinking because we have to do things to create content so on the nights off this has been like uh i don't want to say lifesaver like we're not <laughs> it's not like it heavily you always have to be drinking but it's just like it's really it's, it's a pleasure to have something like this that's so tasty that has no negative implications i mean the most of them are like 30 calories right this one i have here the hazy which we'll talk about in a sec is 50 and i think everything else is 30 yeah that's right yeah, yeah. the hazy's the hazy's 50 and then all the other ones are 30 yeah right so, so really light and you can you know yeah you can have it again you can have it with lunch and yeah you know, have two with lunch and not really, have, you know, worry about getting back to work with a, with a foggy head. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, get all the flavor from it. So it's just like been such a, a cool thing. So I guess early 2020 would have been, do you remember exactly when, when you launched the, the pan? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was around October, 2020. Yeah. October 2020. About, it's know, like a, so a year and a half yeah. of R and D. Yep. Yeah. So it was about, yeah, I know. Then we, you know, pace first to Christmas and then, and then, yeah, the, the, the pale, um, whatever, nine or 10 months after that. Yeah. Okay. So what was the response when you first launched the, uh, so the pace was the year before in 2019 and then October, 2020 yeah. was the, was Libra. What was the response when you, when you guys put it out? Like did, did it hit immediately? Um, yeah, I think it was, it was really well received. I think that, you know, there was a lot of people I would say that were, you know, skeptical about it. Um, right. I wouldn't say that, you know, non-alcoholic beer was a big thing, um, on PEI, um, right. especially. Um, so yeah, people were definitely, um, skeptical, but I think, um, 
I think to your point, like once you, once, once you kind of think about it and you recognize where, where that fits in, to, um, you know, with your, with your lifestyle and your habits or, or whatnot, like, um, you know, we're not, we're not asking people to, you know, quit drinking, um, altogether. Um, you know, our, 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 our message really is, you know, f- find your balance and, yeah. um, and that, you know, that, that might mean, okay, having, t- you know, two beers so that you can, you know, and then, and then a Libra just so you can stay a little bit longer and, and hang out with your, with your friends and, and, um, you know, not, not have to worry about, um, you know, having, having that extra beer mm. and not feeling well in the morning. Yeah. That it's interesting. You just said that I have a friend who's a fellow podcaster and he, he calls himself, what do you say? He's the beer magician. Cause he makes beer disappear. And he said when he gets the, on those, uh, evenings when he goes a little crazy, he said he's figured out a way to trick himself so that instead of just going beer after beer, when you get into that zone, he goes and grabs a non-alcoholic and you go one beer, one non-alcoholic, one beer. So it keeps that, you know, if you have that urge to continue to drink, you can still do it, but it allows him to, to, like you said, feel a lot better in the morning and not be a, a little wild. So I feel like they really do play more of a role in, uh, or they should play more of a role in sort of a balanced drinking habits for, for most people. And it really seems like they're really getting into the, like the, the consciousness of, of craft beer drinkers and beer drinkers period now, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Like we're not, you know, we're not here to judge anyone's, anyone's drinking habits, but we're, we are offering an, an alternative for people that want to, you know, mix things up a little bit. Yeah, it's it's super cool. So then, okay, so the, the Pale Ale dropped in October. Um, I think after that, you might have to talk me through this because I'm not too sure if they all, the, the other three came at once or if they were kind of like slowly rolled out. Do you want to maybe talk us through how, um, yeah. which order they came out in after that? Yeah, sure. They were, they were kind of spread out by, you know, a few, two or three months apart, um, each of them. So, so yeah, the yeah the pale ale came out you know before um, before Christmas and then we had that going for I guess it was probably um, close to yeah it was four or five months it would have been like you know late winter early spring and and then we um, yeah then we put out the the hazy IPA yes. um, which is what you're having now and um, yeah with this one we just you know wanted to um, you know, wanted to go heavier on the hops. Um, but again, not, not on the bitter side. Um, no, not at all. you know, I would say it's, and it's, it's, you know, it's not, it's not a new England IPA. It's not a West coast IPA, but I would say it's, you know, leaning towards more of the, of the hop softer hop profile, um, lower bitterness. Um, and one thing, one thing we found, you know, when I was, um, doing like, like the piloting, um, on that is that it did have to have a little bit more a little bit more sweetness and a little bit more body to you know to be able to hold up um more of a more you know more hops um higher hopping rates and 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 dry hopping and whatnot so you know it's not a it's you know it's not a not a heavy hitter at 50 calories but it is it is you know heavier i guess we'll say but that's you know quite quite relative yeah Um, um, so it did, you know, we did have to go a little bit higher on the, um, on the malt side to be able to, um, dry hop it as much as we wanted to, to, you know, hit the, the aromas that we, that we were hoping for. Okay. That makes sense. Those, you answered the question. I was yeah. thinking like, why is it 20 calories more, but makes complete sense. What are the hops in this one? As yeah. Well? Needs, uh, that one is El Dorado, Strata and Comet. Cool. Good mix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a fun mix. Um, and one thing that's kind of cool too that that we've sort of shifted in the last uh, over the last year, we started partnering with um, Crosby Hops. Oh, um, they're great in the PNW. Who yeah. are, yeah, yeah. And uh, and so they're the only um, B Core um, like hop, hop uh, company, yes. hop grower too. So um, yeah, we're getting about seventy five percent of our hops um, from them now. So. Um, that's a lot of fun. You know, it's become sort of like a, yeah, a real special relationship, I, I would say. Um, yeah, cause we're, we're also, um, a B Corp brewery. Um, okay. one of a, one of a handful in Canada. Um, there's not that many really in the U S either. Mm-hmm. We're actually PEI's first, uh, B Corp business. 
Wow. Okay. And for people who don't know what that means, that do you want to just explain what that is? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so B Corp, um, I would say, you know, uh, sort of stands for like a benefit corporation. And, and so when we're talking about benefits, um, you know, a traditional business model is looking to, you know, provide value to the, to the shareholders um, and the, of course, um, and, you know, pro profits above all else, what we'll say. Yes. Yeah. Um, but what a, uh, what the, the B Corp framework sort of looks at, you know, providing benefit to the stakeholders. Um, and so when you're talking about stakeholders, okay, well, o owners are part of that, of course, but um, your big stakeholders are also your, your employees. Um, and your suppliers and your community and your customers. And, and so, you know, we're trying to strike a balance um, which in all those areas. And, um, you know, it might, we, you know, it might be looking at our environmental impact or can, you know, where, where can we use a local supplier versus, you know, somewhere, um, you know, in, in Europe or in, in China or, or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, we're you know we're always looking for ways to okay is this the most beneficial way we can act or what we you know how we can purchase or are these the you know are these the customers that we want to be um dealing with and um you know also just making sure we have really strong you know inter internal values with our with our company and um keeping people happy and having pizza parties to, you know, to celebrate big wins on a, on a Wednesday, for example, you know, you never know what's going to come up, but we, we really try to have, you know, have a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. That's great. I love that. I, and you're right. Yeah. I've, I've dealt with, we have a, a nonprofit as well that we, that we run on with, we've got to be, and we did have a chat with, uh, with Crosby and they were explaining how they work and very cool. It's like something like you're right. Like it's very, uh, it's not super common and it's, uh, it's a very cool sort of addition to the business. It gives you a little bit more of like a, a deeper mission, I guess, than um, yeah, know, just profits, like you said, over everything. So the Hazy IPA came next. Um, yeah, this one is... Oh, yeah, right. Yes. You're <laughs> keeping us on track. Yeah. That's okay. It's so, yeah, my job. Hazy, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah Hazy, Hazy IPA came came out next. Um, and then, and then yeah, the, then the Pilsner came after that. Um, yes. I love this Pilsner. Yeah. This one's fire. So yeah. good. So our um yeah, our main our main flagship at Upstreet is our is our Commons Pilsner. Okay. Um and it was a bit, you know, beer style that I was, you know, home brewing even for, you know, four or five years before Upstreet opened. So I've always been a big um you know, big Pilsner lover. Um and and so you know that was the next one that I really wanted to you know hone in for the um, as a non-alcoholic um, style and so um, so yeah that one that one came out yeah just uh, in probably in August or September I guess yeah okay. four, you know four or five months after the after the other one um, we don't have it here. I forgot. We also did like a one, a, sort of a really small one-off release of a pumpkin spice beer as well. Oh yeah, how was that? Um, yeah, really good. I mean, yeah, people people love the pumpkin spice. I think in, the, uh, in love September it. and, and yeah. October. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The yeah. Best, so, the best time of year. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. So again, you know, borrowing from our. Um, Upstreet beers. We have a gra grave digger um, pumpkin ale that's heavily spiced and it's got some, you know, molasses and vanilla and cloves and ginger, all kinds of different, you know, great the great pumpkin spice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll say and uh, yeah. and and so yeah, we you know bor borrowed a lot of this of uh, those some of those ingredients and flavor profile, but um, you know da da brought it down to you know non-alcoholic level and. and low calorie as well so, Very cool. so that was fun that that'll be something that we're uh, we're going to bring back again um yes. on a bigger right. scale this fall so love to hear forward it. to that yeah um and then next we had the yeah the the stout yes um so that one came out in january oh it's really new um, yeah that so that one's pretty new um i love this one and yeah, this one was a lot of fun. Um, 
you know, I won't necessarily go into all the details of the brewing process, but this one was a lot of fun to, to make because it's actually, it is, you know, it's still the same kind of calories and non-alcoholic beer, but it's actually brewed differently than all the other Libras. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Again, d- done on our, done on our existing equipment, but, um, just using some neat techniques to working with the, the dark malts to get a lot of flavor out of those. But again, no, you know, not, not too astringent and not, you know, not too many calories either. So we're, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's another balance that we've, you know, imposed on ourselves, I guess, too, is that they're not only are they non-alcoholic, they're also low calorie non-alcoholic yeah. beers. Which is super cool. And this one, I was really surprised that I, when I saw that this one was only 30, like the rest, except, you know, the hazy one makes sense. I was pretty surprised. I was just like, I really thought you would have had to just, by the nature of, of stouts, just extract more, uh, more out of those darker malts to get the flavor. But it's just, it's packed with flavor. It's really good. It's not even, it's like, and it's, it's dark too. Like, it's not like that super light brown that you can see through yeah. the whole thing. Like, it's a, it really does look like a, serious stout so like it's very cool to hear that you know you had to sort of you know get, do some work to, yeah. get it, to get it right which is awesome no totally yeah um and then yeah the last the last one um that i of the cans that i have here is the yes. um is the cherry sour oh yeah there we go i mean not cool. used to this uh the, the mirroring but anyway yeah, it's a bit um, weird. Yeah, the cherry sour. So that was, you know, another another challenging one to make, I'll say. Um, so, you know, as as people know, um, fruit, you know, fruit fruit has uh, has fermentable sugars in it right. too, which um, which will contribute to the um, the alcohol content. So so yeah, trying to find the the balance between the the beer flavor and just enough fruit to add to the beer to still make it, um, you know, non-alcoholic was, um, a lot of fun as well. Uh, and we trialed, yeah, we trialed a bunch of different fruits. Um, and yeah, really, I'm, I'm my favorite all the way through was the, was the cherry sour. I tried to, you know, make sure that it was a, a group decision, I guess, I guess we'll say on the, uh, on the fruit that we that we use, but um, it was definitely my favorite one that we that we trialed. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any other uh, special? I mean, obviously the, the cherry sour and the pumpkin were the two kind of like more would be seasonals, I guess you'd consider them. Are they? Um, do you have any other ones planned that you can speak about at all? As far as other? Yeah. 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 Well, we don't. We, I guess I'll say we don't have anything like that's like you know. Um, tied to a particular like release date but um there are some other you know pilots that i'm working on um really trying to um you know i've I've piloted but you know i'd like to to at some point have the first uh non-alcoholic saison Um, okay i think that would be that would be really cool so um yeah i have had some uh promising results on that and i've been chatting with um Richard at the uh, Escarpment Labs, um, nice. the uh, Canada's only, I guess, yeast provider, <laughs> we'll yeah. say, um, yeast, yeast lab. So, yeah, um, hoping to hoping to come up with, with something there that can um, can be scaled up. A um, few other ones, like I mean, uh, yeah, Vienna Lager is one that I've done. Mm. It's um, pretty interesting, you know, a nice multi multi kind of a lager. Yeah. Maybe Dope. maybe a West Coast IPA, something a little bit more bitter than um, different than the other two, um, pale and, and IPA. Yeah, so those are kind of the again, the, you know, I have my personal preferences, and and then we have our you know the sales team that we're that we're working with as well to try to find you know the right the right fit. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll have another um, release before the year's done. All right, I love that. I was going to ask you, mentioned your preferences. I was going to ask you what your favorite is of these ones. And then maybe what, what's like the, the, the highest seller. I mean, I imagine it's probably the pale ale being that yeah. that's the can that's printed as opposed to the, the, yeah. the, the, the other types of labels here. Yeah. Well, there are, yeah, there, um, the next, uh, you know, the next couple of batches, I think of the, of the IPA and the Pilsner, those ones will be in printed cans Sick. pretty soon. Um, but but yeah, as far as my favorite, I would say that um, the Pilsner and the IPA would be the two that I would have 
the most. Um, yeah, my partner, she loves the stout too. So it's probably those three that we'd have, you know, in the fridge um, all the time, most of the time. Um, I would, I would dare say that the Pilsner is the one that tastes the most like um, a regular beer out of, out of all the lineup. Um, but not to say they, they, you know, they all, I think they all taste great and they all like, they, they're all, they all taste different than like a lot of the other non-alcoholic beers that I've tried too. So, um, but yeah, if I was to pick one that I think tastes the most like a regular beer, it's probably the Pilsner, the Pilsner. maybe the Stout after that. Yeah. I would agree uh, wholeheartedly. I think Pils would probably be my favorite as well. It's, it's just money. Um, it's like, I don't know if I really expressed it, but I'm such a huge fan of this, like this, that you guys really turned, like I said, my partner and I onto non-alcoholic beer. And after getting the pale ale, I started looking into it a bit more and maybe, you know, other breweries would just do some one-offs or I'd be trying different ones. And I always come back to Libra. Um, and you can get for people who do want to get them. The beautiful thing about non-alcoholic beers, you can essentially ship anywhere in the country, um, which is phenomenal. Except for Quebec, yeah. because Quebec always does that, but it is available here. Um, there's a non-alcoholic store I found here in Montreal, and I was able to purchase a, a mixed case, which I, that was my next thing. You can get the mixed cases, which is super cool, because then you can get uh, basically you know an equivalent amount of all of the, uh, the four beers, at least the four, the core ones, um, which is great, because yeah. it's like whatever mood you're in, you can just... you've you've got something there and it's it's such a pleasure to have these around like it's it's so and they're so well priced as well like it's really not very expensive for the quality that it is and i haven't had anything that really comes close if i'm if i'm honest like it's this this is yeah. just like the top of uh of non-alcoholic beers i think for sure. no thanks a lot yeah i mean we're yeah they are you know they're priced like a little bit lower than your regular craft beers um they're not you know they're they're more expensive than, you know, the, you know, no name Blondale or something like that from the, <laughs> from the grocery store. Yeah. A little bit, but you know, you get a yeah. little bit more from the, this thing, you know, you've got, you can name yeah. the hops that are in these things. I mean, it's, it's really impressive. Yeah. Speaking of that, you mentioned before about the, uh, the pills that being the one that tastes most like, um, you know, an alcoholic pills, but this hazy IPA tricks some people yeah. in the, in a good possible yeah. way. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so recently, yeah, I guess, la yeah, last month we entered, um, the, uh, New York international beer competition. Um, and so to be eligible to, to enter it's for, you know, any, any brewery that, um, doesn't have a product for sale in the, in the state of New York, I guess. And, uh, okay. you know, New York's a quite a large market, I guess we'll yeah. say. Um, that's probably an understatement, but you know, I don't know the population, but it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a big, big place. Yeah. Um, so they would, you know, they would go through a lot of, they, they have a big, you know, a big beer scene. I've been there a couple of times to, you know, to Brooklyn and lined up at other half, just like you all the to. other, uh, all the other beer, um, beer fans. Yes. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, definitely, you know, definitely high standards for, for beers and definitely, um, you know, one of the, the leaders for, um, for IPAs and for, and for hazy IPAs too. So, so yeah, we, um, they didn't have a specific uh, non-alcoholic beer category or well, they had, they had one, but it, it was for loggers only. Okay. Um, and, you know, as an aside, we, we, we won that category. So. Um, <laughs> that was one, one award was for That's the, so cool. uh, was for the, was for the Pilsner and the, uh, non-alcoholic lager category. But, but, um, what was really cool and really exciting for me as a brewer is the, we entered the, um, the Libra IPA, um, just into the IPA category. So up against, um, regular IPAs as well. And, um, they, you know, they decided to award it, um, a, a silver medal. Um, amazing, which is, you know, amazing. And I know, I'm sure that they did take into account that, um, it was non-alcoholic, but you know, all, all things considered, you know, they, we don't, we don't know exactly what went into it, but, but, you know, the, the results speaks for itself is that, um, they, they decided that it did, you know, it held, it held up, um, against other, uh, regular IPAs. So cool. So they, they knew, yeah. like, first of all, congrats, because that's pretty, pretty yeah. huge to be able to, you know, I think it speaks volumes about, about the products. Um, and 
Do, so they actually were aware that this was a non-alcoholic uh, beer when they were drinking? Because, I mean, I guess you yeah. can pro- probably tell. I don't know. You can do a blind. We did do a blind video one time where we would like pick, <laughs> pick the non-alcoholic beers. So we tried to get like the lowest ABV of the same style and put them all yeah. side by side because I'd had them before. I was able to get it right, but I did it with my cousin and he, he was confused by a few of them as well. So I think... Um, it could be if they, I guess what my point being, if it was completely blind, which I know these things typically are, people could have been confused and yeah. not even know. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what information the judges were, were given or whatnot, but um, whether they were, they, whether they were, they weren't, I guess it's still, you know, it's still got the silver. Yeah. It's all that matters, which is great. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's super cool, and I, I do love that, uh, you know, I, I've told a few people about this. I was in um, Ontario last week, and I was at a, a – they've got the new independent bottle shops out there now. Have you heard about that? So now no. they – well, something they brought in in the last couple of years. So you could like – a cafe can have um, – can now stock beer and wine, like local beer and wine oh, and stuff, right which now. is great. Yeah. So they can curate these stores. And um, I was telling them about Libra as well. I was like, yo, you need to get that in. Um, it's just – it's a, I feel like it's just, if, if you're into non-alcoholic beer, I feel like you guys are the epitome of that. Um, and it's, it's cool. It's just, I'm like, just looking at the branding. It's just, it's so pretty and it's, it's just such a fantastic product. I'm a huge, huge fan. So congrats, man, on, on all of that. And yeah. Uh, I'm really glad oh, that these are, I'm glad this picking up, uh, like that you've made it into its own, a beast unto itself type of thing. It, it feels like it yeah. deserves that level of attention rather than this sub brand of, of a brewery, you know? No, for sure. It's yeah, you know, it is really is taking on a, a life of its own. And um, and yeah, speaking of Ontario, the yeah the oh, pale yes. ale is is um, is actually launching at the LCBO um, yes. in the middle of middle of May, which is dope. So it's only a couple um, of weeks away from from filming date. So by the time this comes yeah. out, I think it's probably the week that this comes out um, that it'll be available, which is very oh, convenient. Awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, if people be and it's, it's the pale ale for now, specifically. Yeah, the pale ale for now. Hopefully, the first of many. But first of um, many. Yeah, the pale ale for now, and it's um, you know, a lot, I don't 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 quote me on which stores are going to have it, but they, you know, it should. I think it's going to all the stores. Yeah. Okay, and I think um, even if it's not for whatever for whatever reason, yeah. you can ask for it. You can ask the manager yeah. at the store and be like, "Hey, can you get in the uh, the Libra Pale?" And for, I, I believe they'll at least like get a case or two or something like that if, if yeah. people start asking. So definitely go do that in Ontario. I would highly encourage people to do that. But if even beyond the LCBO, they can still order, when I say they, like any, any other province in Canada aside from Quebec who can also get it locally, but any province yeah. in Canada can go to drinklibra.ca and actually order any of the beers individually or a yeah. mixed case or whatever it might be. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we run our we run our own store. Yeah, and we can. Yeah, you can order any of our um, beers. Yeah, drinklever.ca, um, and then we're also on well.ca, and we work with. Um, yeah, in Quebec, um, we work with an importer or distributor called uh, Pivo. Pivo. Yeah, and Fred. and and they've. Yeah, uh, and they've been getting it. You know, all it's been doing really well in Quebec. It's uh, yeah available Good. all kinds of different, um, different stores there. Yeah. I love it. I love to see it. Yes, I, there's actually a whole store here that I got it from because I hit Fred up. He hit me up and be like, "Hey, I'll get you some Libra." And I'm like, "Well, please," because it's a it's a fave. And I tried to order it a couple of times, not realizing why it wouldn't let me order. And he put me in touch with the there's a whole store here that only sells non alcoholic products. So oh. I was able to get the the mixed case. It was super easy to get. I know Fred's based in Quebec City, so there'd be a whole bunch of you know, he's got a very wide uh, distro network. So. You know, you should it shouldn't be difficult to get here in Quebec either, um, which yeah, is perfect. awesome. Yeah. So everyone can fetch that. So um, we'll, we'll, I, we'll move on probably to the the upstream side of things now. I feel like we've sure. got a real solid. I really want to spend sort of like half the podcast on on this, um, just because it's it's uh, such a huge category that's really like uh, you know change. I feel like it's really changing things the way people approach you know alcohol and, and beer and uh, you guys are the best at it i i think so i love it um upstream time we're going to start with the ipa yeah let's start with the start with the ipa yeah the so this is yeah. um thank you <clears throat> yes tell us 
Yeah, so this is a new one, um, uh, Parks and Rec. Yes. Uh, IPA. So it's a um, yeah, it's a low calorie IPA actually. So um, yeah, just only three point five percent and a hundred calories. Um, so yeah, this um, very cool. This just came out yeah, basically two weeks ago. Mm. Um, I didn't realize. And. Yeah, and so this is another one that um, I have been kind of no noodling with, I guess we'll say, on the on the pilot system, right? Um, for a while, and again, it's another, you know, it's sort of a, I'll say, well, it's a step a step in between the the Libras and and um, you know the regular full full strength um, IPAs. So, you know, rather than you know rather than going and, and having you know two seven percent. IPAs, you can, you know, you can ha again hang out and and have, you know, have have two or three of the, you know, low low uh, low cal IPAs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Tons of flavor. Three point five is pretty cool. What is the what what style uh, of IPA is this one? Um, I would say it's you know more like more of a it's not a hazy. It's like sort of a a light and juicy uh, American IPA style. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing it here. It's pouring uh, super clear. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. pouring pour, pouring fairly clear. A little little bit of haze to it, but yeah. Touch a touch there. Uh, yeah. Well, first and foremost, cheers, brother. Yeah. Cheers. Solid. Do you know what's interesting? Because I didn't even take a sip of water between the Libra and this. Like it, it shows the how much flavor is in the Libra. Like this is it's kind of like blending in a bit in, in a good way meaning yeah. that it's like the lever is like trick i can see the you know i can see why people would think that the lever is uh is alcoholic um yeah totally you know it's not a big not a big jump yeah no nah, yeah, this yeah. is and what's the uh, hops in this one man uh yeah so this one is uh sultana calypso and citra sultana calypso citra i love that okay and um yeah. Okay, it's called Parks and Rec. And I guess so you were aiming for like that sort of, yeah, middle ground, like you said, American IPA that's kind of not quite west, not quite east. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. And um, we kind of, you know, another another sort of sub, I guess we'll say a sub niche uh, offerings of beers within Upstreet is uh, what we're calling um, Better For You beers. Okay. So these would be, you know, lower, lower alcohol, lower calorie, um, beers, but still, you know, f full of flavor. Um, so we have, yeah, we have four beers that are sort of falling under that umbrella right now. Okay. Um, yeah, the Parks and Rec is the is the newest one. Um, we have a Cavalier um, Premium Light Lager. We have a uh, Limelight um, Lime Lager. You know, kind of our, our answer to Bud Light Lime or something. Nice, smart. Um, and then we have a, a, um, a plum goza, which um, we're going to try um, oh, nice. next okay. after this one. Yeah. So again, all, you know, all 100 calories or, or lower, you know, 4%. Um, and then, yeah, we sell those uh, locally here. Just, just launched yesterday, actually, um, in a mix pack, the out and about um mix pack so you get uh so you get, get this one beach. the goes uh oh you get a and what was the other one sorry the uh cavalier cavalier um, premium right, okay. yeah light lager yeah mm. that's great and this is this is like yeah, a so, ton of flavor for 3.5 man this is really really yeah. crushable as well like i imagine you know based on the names of what you know you know parks and rec and out and about and all that type of stuff this is intended for you know the picture on on the label is uh like a fox on the beach so, you know, for people yeah. who are active, um, this is like, you know, you go for a hike, you finish up the hike, low ABV, crushable, uh, tons of flavor, but not over the top. You can have a few of these and it's no problem type of thing. And also, yeah, know, highly yeah, yeah, calories. yeah, no, exactly. We have a big, um, I'm not, I'm not a, a player myself, but there's a big uh, disc golf scene now on, okay. uh, <laughs> on PEI. And then as soon as it came out, it became the, you know, official unofficial beer of um <laughs> pei disc golf yeah i love that um what was the third hop was sultana citra and um calypso calypso that was the one sorry okay no yeah, this yeah, is no problem 
This is really, uh, really tasty, man. Um, the so basically, we normally would start with this, but because we started with uh, with Libra, we sort of skipped over. But yeah, I'd love to hear your personal beer history, how you personally got into beer and, and brewing, and then how that led to the to the brewery kicking off. Yeah, for sure. So it probably like yeah, my now now here we are, yeah, twenty twenty two. So I would say you know for me, home home brewing started um, close to twenty years ago, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was home brewing. So I was, um, yeah, at university at, uh, at Dal in, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay. And, um, I, uh, yeah, I did engineering. Um, excuse me. So, um, so yeah, a few of us, um, I would, I would say, you know, um, definitely price conscience when you're, when you're a student, um, yeah, of course. you want to get good, get good value for your, for your dollars and for your beer. So a um, few of us got curious about home brewing. Um, and so, yeah, we started off um, like a lot of home brewers buying, buying like the, you know, the canned kits with the syrup and, you know, you just dilute those in a bit of uh, a bit of bo- boiling water and oh, gosh. Pitch, pitch in the yeast and, you know, kind of hope for the best. Um, <laughs> and you're so, good to go. <laughs> you know that's like the you know the microwave dinner of um <laughs> of, of home brewing or something like that yeah, uh, yeah. that's hilarious um, but that's how you know that's that's how it started um but then i'll say you know a couple of us got a little bit more curious and maybe had had a little bit higher standards and we wanted to figure out okay how do we you know how do we make something a little that tastes a little bit better so then we Okay, maybe let's let's try adding, you know, adding our own hops or, um, you know, but like yeah, with you know, boiling it or you know, change like getting into kegging or or whatnot things that you know to try to improve on on the quality. Um, and then and then I would say I just you know kept let's say I kept taking it farther and farther and you know more and more from from scratch. Um, right. You know, read read a couple books. The you know, the joy of home brewing um, is the you know the, the Bible of home brewing for sure. So what's the is it um, John Palmer's How to Brew? Yeah, John the Palmer's book? How to Brew is a is a yeah. The, it's still it's still online. Yeah, web based um, home brewing book. The yeah, the joy of home brewing is uh, Charles Papazian. Okay, um, is who wrote that, and he he founded the um, American Home Brewers Association as well, actually. Hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I just, you know, just, I'll just say, I just kept escalating it further and further, um, until at one point, you know, it was a a hobby out of control, I guess we'll say I had, you know, a a kegerator with, uh, three or four beers on tap, um, a whole room in the basement full of carboys and, and malt and, um, uh, a kegerator, um, and you know there's uh, pretty much always a carb always a dirty carboy soaking in the bathtub (laughs) um and and yeah i just you know um again you know big food food lover really you know really technical i would say and um you know just just really wanted to keep making it making it better right um and eventually kind you know kind of nailed a few recipes um and so, you know, then when you're, you know, young guy going going out with your friends, instead of instead of grabbing a, a six pack or or a twelve pack at the liquor store, well, I'd, I'd show up at parties with a couple of growlers of my of my homebrew, and I'd be like, oh, do do you you know do you want to try this? And um, eventually, that's how I met Mitch, just like randomly at um, at a house party. Right. And uh, he he tried a beer that I had made that point. It was a uh, vanilla cranberry stout Dope. Um, that I that I had made for I had made it for my brother's wedding originally. Actually, he got married. They got married at um, around Christmas time. So, so yeah, he he tried that and um, and and yeah, then he you know he got curious about craft beer and and about the you know the the business of. <laughs> Of, of a brewery and, and, and whatnot. And, um, probably two, two or three years later, um, over lots more home brews and lots more beers. Um, eventually we you know, opened up street. Okay. So did you, did you turn Mitch onto 
beers or was he already kind of into it at the time? I would say he was, I would say he was into beers, but didn't ha- maybe ne- didn't necessarily, um, so far back, but didn't necessarily think about like, a, you know, a craft brewery on PEI. At that point there was, the chair is broken here. At that <laughs> point there was only, uh, I guess at that point there was one fairly large brewery on PEI, the PEI Brewing Company and the uh, slash Gahan House. They had a, had a brew pub location oh, yeah. and then there was, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then there was um, Bar None Brewery as well. That's sort of a, uh, yeah, like smaller um, country brewery. So, so yeah, there was no one, no one else sort of in between, um, I would say. And, and uh, a lot of restaurants, I think around were probably still fairly skeptical um, about craft beer at that point. (laughs) Okay. And when was, when did you guys decide to open that? Like what year was that? Uh, We opened in June of 2015. Mm. 2015. So how long did it take you guys to, from when you go, when you decided like, Hey, we should do this to when you opened, what was that time? Uh, was about, uh, really, it was two years, I would say. Two years. Yeah. That's not bad. From when we said, when we said, let's, let's do it. And then, you know, what are we going to do? What sizes are going to be? What are the beers going to be? You know, where, even where, where is it going to be? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it really wasn't until it was probably nine months before we opened that we found, um, the building that we're in yeah right that's a pretty decent time nine months isn't bad for the fit out and uh yeah build and everything yeah How... for sure yeah we we took position yeah just before christmas of 2014 i guess and then okay in june yeah that's not bad so then, yeah. how was the response being that maybe, you know, the Gahan Brewery, I definitely heard of them um, out here. I think they might have had a few beers in the LCBO uh, back in the day when I first uh, got into craft beer. Yep. Yeah, they would. Yeah. yeah had, okay, cool. That's what I'm thinking of then. How, um, how was the response from the community being that it's, from what you're saying, I definitely want to get into that more, like, you know, from a community that maybe is a little newer to the, I'm sure there's a bunch of diehards, of course, like, like anyway. Yeah. But yeah, what was the the vibe? Yeah, the response is really cool. So where we're yeah where we're located to um, is we're just you know next to it. We're sort of out, just sort of outside of the downtown core, next to a you know residential area. Um, but it is kind of a you know a, a through fare, I guess we'll say. Lots lots of cars pass by and and whatnot. But people can walk here or or drive here or whatnot. But, but yeah, the response was, um, was interesting because yeah, it was, we were, you know, we started off with, uh, with three beers. We had our mm-hmm. do-gooder pale ale, our Ruby social strawberry, um, rhubarb wheat beer and our commons pilsner. So, um, we didn't start off you know, with anything too, too heavy, Crazy. I would say. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, everything was fi- you know, 5.5% or, or under. Kind of thing um but um but yeah like the yeah restaurants were really excited to to have another option i would say to mm. to put on tap um and and yeah so we were yeah draft only for the first summer um and then we got a bottler and we um <clears throat> yeah we're into the into the, the provincial liquor stores um in yeah late november yeah, 2015. Okay. And did, when you, um, you know, started out on this, did you have an idea in mind to be like, all right, you know how like you know, mo- a lot of breweries are focused on specific things you know, maybe there's the Hayes breweries or they do lots of lagers and crispies and stuff. Like, did you go into this with like, all right, we're going to do this or were you trying to maybe, you know, kind of hit all the styles that like, did you have an intention at all? Uh, I would say there's not really any styles that are necessarily like off limits for us, but um, really try to focus on like accessible, um, accessible beers. I would say okay. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't say like you know, we don't do like we have maybe you know one you know higher ABV beers, but sort of low you know low low to moderate ABVs. Um, a lot of flavor, but not like extreme flavors. I guess, I guess we'll say, you know, not not too bitter, not too sour. Like sort of like a little bit more. Again, I know safe is the wrong term, but just like accessible beers. I guess we'll mm. say is you know. Um, 
and that was beers that, you can, beers that you can have more than one of i would i think right. too yeah 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 and that was like that was the aim that was like the the intention from the from the beginning was to do that essentially i, I think so. i think so yeah yeah i mean i guess i would say we're you know we're making beers that we like to drink ourselves too um very important for sure. yeah 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 we, um like was that because of the community because of who the drinkers potentially were or like it was really one of those things where you and Mitch were just making what what you wanted and that happened to also align with the community too yeah there was a little bit of that and i and i would say like as like a new craft beer market you know we didn't yeah we didn't want to put out anything too too risky or or, or whatnot All right. um I think I mean I would say we got we got more adventurous as we as we went along. Um, you know we got into the we had the you know barrel aged imperial um, stouts and and whatnot and uh, um, but had you know had some fun with some of those like um, one that was a lot of fun was a a, a barrel a, yeah bourbon barrel aged um, we heavy uh, with spruce tips. Wow. Um, nice. That was like, yeah, that, that one was a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah. See, that's um, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we do saisons. Like we have our, um, I guess we have, yeah, we do like three or four different saisons each year. We have our, uh, De Novo, um, that's our anniversary beer. Um, it's sort of a, you know, it's been different, different types of Brett saison or dry hop saisons. And then now we're sort of trying some different, um, fruit at Saison. So we did pineapple tangerine last year and we're doing uh, apricot mango um, yes. this year. Yeah, just some some fun stuff with, with fruit as well. Um, I would say that, you know, that's another thing we do. We, you know, do do a lot of different fruit beers. Um, you know, the lot, like I mentioned, the lime lager, um, not as, maybe not as like, adventurous, but then, you know, strawberry, strawberry rhubarb, there's not a lot of rhubarb um, beers. Oh, out no. there um the pl you know plum goza um we have a uh major tom uh watermelon sour um it's out now it's like our you know liquid jolly rancher that's awesome um that's a lot of fun the cherry sour so yeah we have you know we have a lot of different fun with fruit beers too what would you say you're known for the most um, I would say now we're, we're probably more known for, I would, you know, for IPAs, we would have, okay. you know, the, the largest, largest selection of, of IPAs of, of any of the breweries on, on PEI. Okay. Do you do a bit yeah. of everything, bit of West Coast, bit of like New England, bit of American? Yeah. Like this one? Yeah. Yeah. Really just a bit of everything. Um, and we don't necessarily, we, we, you know, we don't really get into some of the you know, the hazies where, okay, let's put out the same beer, but with different hops this time. Right. Um, we try to, you know, try, try to do one of each style um, really well. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and keep that consistent. Okay, sweet. So when you were, you started bottling in uh, 2016, it sounds like, um, did you yeah. get distro outside of PEI at all? Um, yeah, before, yeah, before long, we did get into, yeah, we got draft uh in in halifax and nova scotia um yeah the win uh, yeah the first winter i guess winter 2016 um and then yeah some few a few like listings yeah with the liquor commissions um i mean yeah as you know probably the liquor rules and commissions are different in every province um I'm sure it'd be, you know, be an interesting spreadsheet to, yeah. to you know, map compare. it all out and <laughs> compare them all. But, um, you know, in PEI, we don't have any private liquor stores, but in Nova Scotia, there are a couple of um, groups of private liquor stores. So they're able to take in any product that the Provincial Liquor Commission um, doesn't doesn't list or doesn't, yeah, doesn't have a, a general listing for. So... So yeah, we, we send lots of, you know, lots of beers, um, over to, um, at the harvest group and, uh, and Bishop cellar, the two, um, groups of, uh, private liquor stores over there. So they'll, they'll take all of our seasonals and they have, you know, all the, all the core beers as well there. Um, and then, yeah, no, new Brunswick, um, as well. 
Um, we'll always have, you know, a few different beers there. Um, we do really well in Newfoundland too, actually, cool. um, with the, with our craft beers. Um, I think one thing we might have going in Newfoundland is that there's, there's not a lot of breweries that are doing their own cans mm -hmm. there. So, um, there's a lot of chance for other, you know, other craft breweries to, to get in there and, and from outside of Newfoundland to get their products into the stores there. That's cool. I mean, so that means yeah. basically in every province in uh, Atlantic Canada, it sounds like, except Labrador. Yeah. Yeah. We're in every province in Atlantic Canada. We don't have, and then, um, yeah, we don't have any of our beers in Quebec. Um, but also, also in conjunction with the, the Libra Pale Ale launching at the LCBO, um, we'll try this beer in a few, in a few minutes, I imagine. But the, yeah, the Ruby Social is also going to be, um, Strawberry rhubarb wheat beer is going to be in the LCBO for the summer too, which is great. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's and a pretty then, big step, yeah. then, I guess. Getting uh, you know moving th these are your first two beers in Ontario, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, like the LCBO is the biggest purchaser of alcohol um, in the world. In in the world, actually, yeah, yeah. which is crazy. It's a, it's yeah, a good so look. It's pretty pretty yeah. exciting. Um, we, we can do that. We probably actually looking at the, the clock shortly. We can, we can move on to whichever, uh, whichever one is optimal, whether we do the Goza or the, uh, the wheat first. You tell me. You sure. Guys. Yeah. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. let's try the, let's try the Ruby social since yeah. I was just, um, just good talking segue. about it. And, it was a good yeah. segue. The red one. Yeah, yeah for sure. Nice. So this was, um, yeah, this was a beer that I, um, one of the three that we opened with and one, one of the beers that I was, um, home brewing with as well okay. too before before we opened yeah so um, again you know P PEI is um, one of the one of the fruits that um, that grow here I'll say we don't you know not everything grows here yeah right but uh, yeah. the strawberry and the rhubarb is uh... yeah strawberry and the rhubarb yeah yeah and so what yeah when I was home brewing um, we you know pick rhubarb and then um, chop it up into little pieces and kind of jam it into the carboy um, to to let it steep and stuff. So um, a lot of labor, a lot a lot of fun for sure. Bad, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The the rhubarb uh, isn't a super. I've seen a few like strawberry rhubarb beers over the years, but it's super few and far between. Yeah. So it's um yeah it's pretty cool. So then um I'll pour it up. Beautiful. So this beer essentially, so on the can it says wit beer, would you can, is it more of the Belgian style like wit or would yeah. you say it's sort of like a wheat? I guess sort I don't know what the difference is to be honest. Yeah, I would say it's, you know, kind of a, kind of a hybrid. It does, it has, um, it is spiced with, with, um, with coriander. We don't, it doesn't have um, uh, orange peel would be a traditional ingredient in a wit, wit beer. Right? Doesn't have it uh, doesn't have those, but we kind of you know supplement some of those citrusy flavors with um, with some hops, of course. Of course. Um, so yeah, it does it does kind of have the at base of a you know a traditional um, wit beer. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we you know pot, um, add on the the strawberry and hibiscus um, purees um, in the in the fermenter. Okay. Uh, oh, hibiscus as well. Oh yeah, 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 hibiscus, yeah, yeah. So we, um, oh right, so yeah, yeah. So it's got hibiscus in the in the kettle. That um, we use, that adds a bit of a tartness and a bit of color to it as well. Um, okay. So we found, yeah, just sort of found through through brewing it that the yeah the strawberry the strawberry added flavor, but not a lot of the the red color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because strawberry is an interesting one. This is a bit of a softer fruit that kind of needs. A... Yeah. A bit of a backbone so the hibiscus so you didn't go nuts in it obviously if, you know, if you're watching here you can tell the, the color how would you describe yeah. the color it's like an opaque pinky yeah 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 red. exactly yeah. yeah um so this this is uh, one of the flagships i guess you would probably consider that one yeah this is one of our flagship beers and we've you know been making it right right from the beginning nice. yeah okay um, there's lots of you know lots of diehard fans I would say of the of the Ruby Social. Mm -hmm. um, it's also mm -hmm. one that we found that you know even people that didn't necessarily think that they they liked beer, um, it's one that we'd you know give them to try at 
you know, we're out at, you know, at, at events or, or whatnot. Um, and I think we, you know, kind of won people over with it for sure. Yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely is that kind of like summery patio type of thing, but you can still sort of like crush it year round. Um, yeah. This style, why did you choose this particular style, like a whip beer, which I guess is sort of like, you always get a, I always think like 2015, it's not that long ago, but I feel like in the beer world, it was such a, like things yeah. were very, like it sort of changed so much. I remember I drank a lot of wits, I think around that time. Um, I feel like it was almost more common at the time, but I, I imagine this one, it was some, one of those things where it was just became like a real hit amongst the, the locals yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, it would have been, it was quite, you know, for PEI too, quite, quite novel and, mm. and, um, <clears throat> unique on the, on the beer scene for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I know it's not, well, it's not the same exactly, but you know, Ale Allagash White, um, is the big, you know, most well known, I would say on the American craft beer scene as far as, uh, with beers go. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, no, this is super solid, man. I haven't had anything like this for, for a little while. It's a bit of a nice day out here. So it's kind of like, it feels like, yeah. I know exactly how this can um, how this can fit in. This is super cool. So, why did you choose this specific one um, to go for the LCBO along with the Libra Pale? Yeah, well, I would say we didn't. In, not that we didn't have a choice, but um, th this was the one that they selected. Like we had put put forward all of our um, flagship beers. Um, it may have it may have even been like a call a summer call for for fruit beer specifically now that i think about it yeah um so 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 yeah um not that we wouldn't have chosen it had you know given the choice or, or whatnot but this was the this was one that they um decided you know fit fit what they were looking for for that um summer listing perfect love that yeah yeah it's like i imagine it probably would be a good fit in the, I'm just thinking of the LCBO like that. I feel like it would it would be a unique offering and something cool as well yeah. because it's from somewhere that maybe many people haven't been or don't get a lot of beers from from PEI. So it's uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, exactly, yeah. And then the novelty. name, like the, I mean, the name mm -hmm. is like uh, strawberry socials are kind of a big thing. Um, maybe not during the past couple of years, but um, maybe maybe come again this this year. The well, you know the local church will have a strawberry social or the, um, you know, a local pop politician kind of have a, you know, Sunday afternoon strawberry social show up and kind of, you know, shake hands and kiss babies. And, oh, that's what it's um, called. Like when people and just... what and whatnot. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah. People, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a, you know, definitely a, I think a PEI thing, if not Atlanta, Canada hmm. thing, thing or whatnot. So, um, so, so yeah, that, you know the name is kind of a kind of a play on that and um and and yeah i mean the uh the label's always gotten some gotten some funny looks for for sure but we have have some fun with that yeah what's the uh it looks like i don't know if it's oh i guess that's the social that you're referring to like that's the yeah the social you know they're they're at the social but then the you know the guy the, the skull guy or whatever is the maybe the unexpected guest yeah <laughs> i love it I thought it was a wedding yeah. or something, but that makes much more sense. Okay, so that's like yeah, a cool, yeah. fun local reference. I've just I've never heard that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, totally. Yeah, um, yeah. I shouldn't. I, I didn't haven't mentioned it yet, but I should mention our our designer um, for all of our for all of our labels. Not not for the Libra. We work with um, small monsters for for those. But um, Judd Haynes um, is our designer for all of our. Um, upstreet beers uh, and he's a designer out of Newfoundland um, and for us yeah when we when we were getting started um, we you know we're big big music lovers I would I would say as well and, and so we we really wanted to try to have like a music feel with our labels like you know with, whether it be you know an album cover or concert poster kind of a feel so mm. um, so yeah we sort of sought out um, someone you know a canadian artist and and um how we found judd was um through a local connection um 
you know, we had found out that he had done some artwork for Tragically Hip and Blue Rodeo and City in Color and, you know, lots, lots of really cool, like, That's Canadian cool. bands. And, and so, yeah, we had a mutual friend um, introduce us uh, to him. Um, and, and yeah, we've been working with him ever since. So we'll, you know, we'll give him the name, name of the beer and maybe some of the information and whatnot that um, is going to appear on the on the side of the label and then he'll he'll come back with a you know totally unique um concept for the for the artwork that's great um, and it's a bit you know a bit of a longer process i would say than, than some um some beer labels but um we think it's worth it and it, it you know makes them stand out definitely i can see that because i've seen the city and color stuff so i know exactly the vibe as you said that mike i get it yeah, that's really cool, man. I like that because that kind of like, yeah, ties in the music and it's like, I guess someone who's, you know, been doing this for a while and this is your brand this is what people are going to remember. So you want it to be, uh, you know, thoughtful and, and if it takes a while, it takes a while. It's, it's definitely yeah. worth it. Okay, that's sick, man. So the flagships, I actually forgot to ask earlier, how many flagships do you have and what are they? Yeah, uh, I guess rather than count, try to count them, yeah, kind of go. I'll kind of go through them. So, um so yeah, we have uh, yeah we still have our three originals: the, the Dugater uh, Pale Ale, Strawberry Rhubarb Wick Beer, uh, Ruby Social, Commons Pilsner, um, and then we have a uh, White Noise um, IPA. So that's yeah seven percent IPA. So um, that's probably our second most popular beer now after Commons. Um, and then we have a uh, 80 Bob uh, Scottish Export Ale. Um, a nice, uh, you know, the, the malt bomb of the family. Um, and then we have uh, Go Devil um, IPA, 6.66%. Um, and uh, third place, uh, double IPA. Um, and then, yeah, those, those are the cores. And then, yeah, a few different seasonals, um, Grave Digger Pumpkin Ale, the Major Tom Watermelon Sour, um, black tie affair uh yeah that that's the uh the vanilla cranberry stout actually that i mentioned ah. earlier did did eventually become you know a real life beer too yeah that's awesome a cool yeah. name for it too uh, and then, okay yeah i yeah. guess you got the, and, uh, the box and rack and the that that new pack yeah yeah then the, then the new yeah the better for you beers the uh yeah parks and rec the limelight lime lager the go go goza that will probably finish sure. with yes sir. yeah yeah where did the um oh, go on. oh yeah quite so yeah quite a variety and then yeah. yeah we do um we do an in so i mentioned yeah the de novo the this year yeah apricot mango saison and then we do a really cool collaboration with the um the inn at bay fortune and um chef michael smith um uh so he you know our our, our local pei celebrity chef um, so he, yeah, he has the, has a restaurant and then he also has, actually has a farm on site with the restaurant and a full-time farmer, um, Kevin. So him and I actually work together, um, on a beer every year. And, uh, so it's using ingredients that are grown on their farm. Um, so last year it was, uh, it's always a saison. So yeah, last year it was a, um, uh, apple and marigold um saison so mar marigold flowers that they um harvested and dried and then this year is a uh basil and mint uh saison so kind of like a mojito type um flavor profile on that that's fascinating i love that that's really interesting marigold i've only ever seen that in one other beer before so that's very cool that uh yeah bringing them in I like yeah that. totally so that's that's a lot of fun yeah okay yeah. um the i wanted to ask about the um uh the better for you series like where did that i don't know if we touched on it before but like the, did that idea for the low calorie kind of more crushable thing obviously you know it's pei feels like a real out i feel like all of atlantic canada are pretty outdoorsy i mean obviously yeah not in the damn winter but like you know a pretty uh outdoorsy place so it would did it was it inspired by that or was it kind of similar to excuse me libra in the sense of it was a little more um just aiming at some more balance or was it somewhere between them the two 
Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say it's somewhere in between. Yeah, so like you know, beers that kind of you know fit a more of an outdoor outdoor sort of active lifestyle. Um, the yeah, this year is the you know it's the out and about variety pack, and last year it was the you know beach day essentials um, variety pack with a you know similar lineup of beers, and it's you know you know whether it's um, yeah, it's the it's the kind of thing you know you can take to the beach and throw in your cooler and um, you know sip on for sip on for a couple hours or have a couple while you're tossing a frisbee around or 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 whatnot um, or or yeah you can you know take take a take a four pack in for for a round of disc golf or 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 hike yeah <laughs> hike in the woods or or whatnot yeah so. Um, Again, you know, something that's not not too heavy, but still has a decent amount of flavor. Hmm. I like that. I mean, it seems to be. I was sort of curious if it was like reflecting the, you know, the 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 things that you know, like usually, you know, food and and any and beverages and things like that would probably reflect the activities, behaviors, things that people yeah. in that area do. So um, obviously, you know, Canada is a great outdoors country as well. You know, year round. So it's kind of always necessary probably more so in the summer obviously but um no it's cool it makes it makes a lot of sense so like i said earlier at the beginning like we haven't had anyone on from the east coast so i'd love to hear a, a bit about the i mean i'm familiar i've tried some some breweries from uh from a few different uh, provinces out there but i'm not like super like tapped in i imagine maybe a lot of our audience isn't either um maybe if you could just speak to the the craft beer scene and sort of how it's looking and yeah. how it's sort of changed over the last few years both in pei and kind of the greater atlantic uh, provinces yeah yeah for sure so we do you know it is still um there's a lot of, there's a lot of breweries i would say it's still kind of a small scene really compared to the rest of the country as far as like the you know overall craft beer market share um but yeah, there's over, you know, there's almost 200 breweries within the four um, Atlantic provinces. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we have, you know, we also have, I guess we have a small, a small number of beer bars too. I would say we have um, <clears throat> Hop Yard uh, would be our, you know, main kind of beer bar in, in Charlottetown, and then um, some really great beer bars in, in Nova Scotia with uh, Stillwell and Battery Park would kind of be the. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, you probably heard of, heard of Stillwell. They they have a brewery as well, actually. Okay. Um, that uh, they were sort of you know brewing out of another brewery space, and then they've I think they are just opening their own brewery um, within the last couple of months. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, so there's you know quite a few uh, breweries in Nova Scotia. We actually also have a brew pub in Dartmouth, um, Nova Scotia. Um, upstreet barbecue brew house it's called so it's cool. a, you know barbecue, brew, barbecue restaurant with a with a small um, brew pub system there and we you know make beer to sell on site and maybe sell a few kegs to restaurants in the city there too that and i guess you send over the stuff that you produce in pi as well yeah yeah we send some stuff over and, and make some beer on site there too yeah that's cool um but yeah there's lots of you know lots of great breweries in in nova scotia um there's uh propeller and garrison they're they're each uh celebrating their 25th anniversary actually this year wow um so and they're still still making great beers um someone asked me the other day you know my favorite atlanta canada brewery and actually said propeller um even you know after <laughs> After all these years, they're still they're still finding ways to innovate and put out um, really great um, IPAs. I would say, yeah. Interesting. I remember both of those. In, they they were both yeah. in the uh, LCBO when I was in Toronto a lot. When I lived yeah. there, um, but I remember them. They were they had the big uh, like the five hundred mil kind of curved bottles. So that's cool. Okay, so yeah. that's both still around, live and kicking. Love to hear it. Um, yeah. Is it? I, I imagine it's probably grown a lot. The scene out there over the last. Yeah. Six, like everywhere else yeah for sure no there like there would have been i don't know yeah i don't know the numbers but like i said you know there's there's nine breweries on pei now and we were we were just the third one um so it's been you know similar growth i would say within the within the other provinces what's the population of pei 
to put that uh, into 140, context? 140,000. For the whole yeah. island. Jeez. I mean, yeah, so for the whole island, yeah. What does yeah. that work out to be per person? That's pretty dope per capita. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think we have a pretty good number per capita. I think yeah. Nova Scotia probably has... Nova Scotia probably has more, more breweries per capita. There's a lot. There's a few um, smaller nano breweries and whatnot right. over there too. Yeah. Has the like? Would you say that? I guess I'm just trying to get to sort of understand sort of what you know where people are at as far as maybe the. Let's say complexity. It's not really the word, but the you know where, where people's palates are at and where people's sort of heads are yeah. at in general. Like, would you say it's more yeah. of a you know obviously every region you know the capital even if you say greater quebec like you know obviously montreal is significantly more advanced than than other places and i imagine toronto is yeah. in ontario vancouver blah 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 so sort of in the east like ge generally speaking obviously we can you know, paint it with a broad brush here but you know are, yeah. are people pretty sophisticated craft beer drinkers are, are people chasing trends like a lot of them are out here or are people more just enjoying the you know the brew pub kind of vibe where it's like you know yeah no, that's a good question. Yeah, I, w I would say like within like say Halifax or Fredericton, a couple of like the larger the cities. cities that the, that people would be chasing trends more there. Okay. Um, I would say on PEI, you know, I mentioned the fact you know we're like, okay, we didn't you know we don't get into you know brewing the same beer with just different hops every time. That right. you know that might be a trend that you might see elsewhere in in Ontario or or whatnot. That's and. That's just some, that's something that never really caught on. I wouldn't say in, in PEI or um, or elsewhere. Um, another thing that never really caught on was like the really like high ABV um, barrel aged beers. Like there was just never we like we put out a it? few, but and other breweries have put out a few, but it's like everyone just kind of puts out maybe one a year kind of thing. Hmm. It's not something that people seek out. Hmm. Why do you think yeah. that is for both of those um, things? Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess like, yeah, people don't like, you know, pe people still, it's not that people don't drink as much here, maybe necessarily as other places, but um, maybe they're just, you know, too, too extreme in flavor or something could, could be, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah, it's an it's an interesting thing. I mean, it could just be the development of how deep. Cause I I feel like both yeah. say like the you know the haze where like it. I mean, they're not all necessary. I know you're like joking, but you know, they yeah. can be samey if you if you have a look uh, if if you go to a, a brewery yeah. that does that type of thing. Or you know, I feel like the the imperial stouts and the bourbon barrel aged things are kind of niche. I feel like they're both yeah maybe a larger niche with the haze because it's kind of grown significantly. Yeah. But yeah, I imagine maybe just that the beers didn't get nerdy enough or something out there, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I it's do, do you mind? Do you mind if I take five and just run down to the washroom? Go for it. No, no, I'll I keep don't it know going. If that's. Uh... Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was even thinking the same. Yeah. You go for it first, and uh, let's. Yeah, go. yeah, yeah. I'll keep it going. Okay, no, so, yeah. Sorry about that. I'll be. I'll just be right back. Yeah, yeah. man. No problem at all. Okay. Um, thanks. Cool. Yeah, you're right. It's part of the game. I forgot to tell you earlier. It's all good. Go for it. Yeah, guys. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing with regard to that because I imagine that maybe the bigger cities are probably more inclined to getting into, say, um, uh, the the haze or the extreme, you know, uh, barrel-aged beer and things like that. That kind of feels more... Uh, accurate to me just say based on you know like maybe people in small town ontario you know a couple hours away from toronto uh probably aren't going to be haze chasers or like you know gagging for the next pastry start or anything like that uh as opposed to maybe people closer to toronto or something because i'm just trying to think like you know there's a few of the the sort of haze uh forward breweries in ontario like you know barn cat in cambridge or badlands in caledon or uh, third moon in Milton there or um you know folks like that that are outside of the city I'm trying to think of the outside of the city ones um they've kind of started them there but I feel like maybe Ontario is a, a more of an outlier as far as um people kind of chasing all of those trends so it's sort of curious I know like say in the in, if we come back to the east coast you've got I think uh trailways in Fredericton uh that would you know you put them in probably the trendy 
Hayes kind of category. Um, Two Crows and... Fuck, what's the other one in Halifax? I swear there's another one in Halifax that does all Hayes stuff. Um, that would, you know, be more in that trendy vibe. Uh, it might come to me later. Or maybe I am just thinking of Two Crows. But I think that's... Um, it's interesting. I imagine if, it's, if the entire province of PI only has 140k people, which is fucking crazy. I had no idea it was that small. Um that, you know, it's it might just not be possible to grow a nerdy craft beer scene with that few people because there probably wouldn't be enough craft beer nerds for it to kind of ex- expand. And then on top of that, you're an island that I imagine, I don't know if there's any bridges to it, completely know nothing about PEI. But if there's no bridges to it, then, you know, maybe it's just not possible uh, to start a... Um, a super nerd. I was just hypothesizing whilst you were... Uh, yeah, uh, about where that's are there bridges from the mainland to PEI, or is it like a ferry thing? Uh, yeah, there's one bridge and one ferry. So there's a, a ferry to Nova Scotia and a bridge to New Brunswick. <clears throat> ah, no shit. Okay, I was just thinking like maybe just yeah. the, the population there just isn't enough to be able to warrant a super hyper nerdy craft beer scene. Like there's just maybe just not enough people, and then the fact that you're a little more isolated. Um, yeah, would probably make that a little more chill. Um, yeah, I was just, I'm just trying to sort of get like a handle of sort of who, you know, yeah. what, what people are drinking in general, uh, out that way. I'm no, going to run to the yeah, washroom no, while you do this and I can still hear you. So keep talking. I'll... Yeah, no, it's, def- it's definitely interesting because it's, you know, I, th- I think about it a lot, uh, when we're trying to figure out what, you know, what new beers to put out or maybe why why a new beer that we thought, you know, was going to, was going to be really popular or maybe didn't do as well. So, um, so yeah, there are, you know, not definitely not as many, um, beer nerds, I would say, um, in Charlottetown or in, in PEI in general, there, there's still some, of course, um, some of them, some of them work at Upstreet, uh, or at other, at other breweries. Um, but, but yeah, there's not that, um, you know, yeah, there's not that critical mass. I wouldn't say that, um, that some of the larger cities would have to, um, you know, sort of warrant putting out um, a lot of experimental or, or one-off beers. Um, yeah, one of, uh, one of the brewers that, that works here, Kate, she, she worked at um, Merritt Brewing. Oh, in Hamilton. Um, in yeah in in hamilton before she before she came um to work here so we yeah we talk a lot about this uh, okay what you know what we love saison so we'd love to have one you know available all the time but um we i guess we're we're, we're niche yeah yeah um yeah no, that makes sense because, like, say here in Quebec, uh, Saison's farmhouse, you know, is super, super popular. Say was so was barrel aged stouts and things like that, huge out here, lambics, yeah. all of that. You go to Ontario, it tended to be more like Quebec was super late on the haze, and funnily enough, on like all the lagers, and you know, like there was seemed to be this, uh, you know, critical mass of uh, brewers who went to Prague in a lot from like twenty eighteen to before the yeah. pandemic type of thing and all of a sudden now we're we've got all of these really great czech lagers and things like that um everywhere so it's sort of like every sort of region i'm mostly familiar with with quebec and ontario so i'm like i understand kind of the way that they're the drink has kind of evolved there's a, a few breweries doing pastries and uh barrel aged barrel aged stuff in in ontario but it doesn't have a, a fraction of the attraction that it does out here so i would imagine it's sort of you know it, that every sort of place kind of has their thing. Like if you're, let's say Zon's a great example. Like it's, it's a bit more of a niche thing. There's some in Ontario, but not that many. And there's become a few breweries now yeah. that are maybe focusing on that, on more of the Hill Farmstead kind of style stuff. And um, that's kind of just their thing. And they're catering to a hype, a niche within a niche type of thing. So it's, um yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Do you guys have a do, do, can, do people like do you bring in products from elsewhere, or is it sort of 
like PEI stuff. Yeah, 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 we do. Yeah, yeah, we bring in we bring in products from elsewhere, but the you know the vast majority of craft beers, I would say, are the you know from the breweries on on PEI. Yeah. Um, so so yeah the yeah the other breweries, I mean they yeah they. I think they I think they do fine. I think that you know people just would probably maybe prefer to support local. That makes complete sense. I mean, I feel I feel like it's kind yeah. of the same anywhere. More more curious yeah. as to as to how people's the drinkers sort of palates and ideas of craft beer are shaped. Whether it's a strictly yeah. local thing or whether they have a similar you know, situation to Ontario, or Quebec, where you can have access to. Yeah. We don't have much here in Quebec outside of. The province there's very very few the only one really regularly i think two crows and um trailway i believe both have distro here but that's kind of it that i can think of so it's like yeah super few and far between to even get your hands on it like you'd have to know somebody that would you know yeah that would trade you or whatever um yeah yeah no totally so like yeah some of the beers that like would be for sale like from outside of you know outside of pei um yeah, I mean, you'd get your, you'd get your. Um, it's funny. I'll say, I'll say Moosehead, but you know, that's it's Moosehead's an interesting one because they're, you know, they're a large. I'm not, I'm not calling Moosehead a craft brewery, but um, you know, they're a lot. They they're, they're Canada's, they're they're Canada's largest um, independent brewery. So does that, does that still make them a craft brewery? Or not? Or, yeah. They, you know what? You have, have to a, check they have a craft brewery division, I guess we'll say, but okay. Um, so yeah, they have some some sort of unique one-offs um, un, under them, and then yeah, like Nine Locks, uh, Two Crows, um, Pump House would be another one that's you know kind of a awesome. larger larger craft brewery um, that would be here. Um, Spindrift, uh, Breton Brewing out of Cape Breton, yeah, uh, Garrison, um, Propeller. Is there yeah, a robot? I mean, not really. Good Some robot, good yeah. Robot. They're, so they're yeah. Good robots out of um, uh, out of out of Halifax, yeah. Good okay. robots, kind of like our, uh, you know, brother from another mother, kind of a <laughs> kind of brewery, yeah. Um, and we we opened around the same time, and you know, been kind of became fast friends <laughs> with them um, right away, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so it seems yeah. like though, like for for drinkers say within pei is there is there a reasonable diverse like diversity of offerings or is it sort of like maybe because halifax i I imagine my guess would be halifax is probably the biggest city in the region and then that would that would probably have most of the tastes covered Uh, you know being you've only got nine breweries in pei i imagine it's there's only so much yeah yeah you can do yeah that. no totally i would say like um you know as far as the beer the, the beers that sell well, well here um like pi brewing company has their 1772 um ipa sort of more like a you know I'll say a hybrid between like a, a british and a west coast ipa so you know have malt, malt forward and and sort of more sort of like old yeah old school hop profile um and then yeah, like our Commons Pilsner would would be like one of the top, again, in the, like the, oh, oh, consistently in the sort of the top sellers as far as like craft beers go. Uh, Copper Bottom is another brewery, so they've they've won uh, some Canadian Brewing Awards for their beers too. So they have um, an APA and a and a double IPA that are pretty good. Um, and then who else? Yeah, Lone Oak has a um, pale ale and a, and a pilsner that do pretty well. Um, and then yeah, like our you know our double IPA and 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 then our you know, white noise IPA do well. So like that's I guess like that's kind of the mix of the top ten. Um, oh yeah, Gahan right? PI yeah, Brewing Company and Gahan have like a, a blueberry wheat beer, two and a, and a beach chair lager. Yeah. That's more or less the top ten, I would say. You know, kind of right. more, you know, more IPA focused and 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 lager focused. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So that's where drinkers are out there. Where would you? Yeah. Where would you put Upstreet then? As far as like, who do you cater towards? I know you said sort of earlier it was very um, 
you know, easy drinking stuff that's approachable um, and, you know, lower on the ABV. So, like, who tends to sort of be, like, do you, is there a certain yeah. dem demographic or sort of, like, type of individual that, yeah. that you see most common? Yeah, I would say, you know, like, sort of a younger crowd or, you know, professional crowd um, would be sort of our main customers. We have... We have another uh, bar downtown called um, Craft Beer Corner. That's kind of the real, like, I'd say it's the hot spot um, for for the young people to, to go to and, and hang out. Um, it's really small. It's always you know hard hard to get in, hard to get a table on a, right. on a Friday or, or Saturday night. Um, that's kind of interesting. I know we're this is the this is a beer podcast, but um, we do we do make um, we do make some other beverages. We have our rewind uh, seltzers, cool. two vodka, vodka seltzers. Yeah, we um, talk about that here. We've so, done whole episodes on seltzers. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah. So we have our you know rewind vod vodka seltzers, and those are those are all um, low calorie, low carb as well, all uh, hundred calories. Sick. Um, and so one thing we find, you know, Craft Beer Corner is sort of an interesting snapshot of the of the demographic, I would say, of what, mm. you know, what young people are, are drinking. Um, and, you know, beer, beer is still number one, but um, a lot of people drink the drink the seltzers. And then we have some um, we put out some hot, like um, high test, uh, like 12 uh, percent kegged cocktails um, last summer that that. Um, are quite popular too. So, um, to get a, you know, a group of three or four might split a, split a picture of those <laughs> over some ice on a, on a hot summer afternoon kind of thing The yeah, blueberry mojito and uh, pineapple party punch are the two flavors of those. Wow. I've only ever seen that in like New York or something. Yeah. It's cool. wicked, man. Yeah, so the yeah you know, the keg cocktails are going well, and that's something that I think we're going to you know plan to put out in cans um, this that coming winter too. Yeah, Sick. that's so clever. That's really creative. I love that. Yeah, so we really there's not re like you know we're you know a brewery first, but um, really a be beverage company uh, in general. Like any you know, and nothing is really off limits. Like off limits um, yeah. And and yeah, like I where I did all the you know the recipe development and everything for the for the rewinds as well, and that was um, you know totally different process than than brewing, more of a, yeah. a blending process. Yeah, right. I imagine they did pretty well though. Like I feel like seltzers are yeah. huge right now still. Yeah, they do really well. Like our um, actually our top selling product last year was our raspberry lemon uh, seltzer. Wow. Yeah. Does that, how does that make you feel as a brewer? Does that, it's like, man, what's going on? Or are you like, cool, whatever? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, I'm, I, I would say I'm sort of in, in between. Like, I'm not like, not like whatever. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I guess I'd say I'm, you know, pr proud of something that I've, you know, that I've created that people are enjoying and whether, you know, whether it's beer or it's, you know, it's Libra, non-alcoholic beer, um, we do some non-alcoholic sodas as well. So like we have a you know, blueberry nice. cream soda and a strawberry rhubarb lemonade. Um, so they're all, you know, they're, you find the creative outlet in whatever we happen to be working on. That's awesome, man. I, I respect that a lot yeah. though, because I know it's sort of like, it's probably fun for you to flex your, like you said, the creative muscle and, and use those brewing skills for you know beer adjacent products which is what all these kind yeah. of are and i feel like it's that same innovation that would uh carry across like to craft sodas and, and things like that it's just fun yeah. and interesting so that's awesome dude i love it i don't know what i really like yeah, your brand sure. i feel like it's like that definitely from what the, the the sort of vision i had of what you guys without obviously having been there because it's kind of hard to get a picture hence all the questions to try and really understand where, where exactly yeah. where upstream is positioned and stuff like all of this feels very yeah. much on brand for, for what you're doing and it feels like it'd be like a real fun place to come and basically would take uh, cater to all tastes if people come with kids well you got soda and stuff and if people are driving you yeah got libra uh if people want to be wiling out or whatever i mean the, the cocktails probably aren't massive abv i imagine it's probably pretty crushable uh the, no they're like 12 percent okay yeah, so they're but decent we... but that's what cocktails yeah, yeah. probably are yeah. Yeah, that's what cocktails are. And we just, you know, serve it in a smaller 
serving size kind of thing. Of course. So, so yeah, like on that note, like our, you know, our, our mission statement at Upstreet is to refresh the community and, um, and yeah, like we do that with, with our beverages and, you know, no, no style is, is off limits. And then, you know, the community aspect is really important too. And that, you know, ties into our, into our B core status and, and really trying to be leaders in our community. I love that. That's awesome, man. Um, on that, do you want to uh, jump to the Goza? Yeah, sure. Let's do it up. The last one. Thank you so much. So, Goza is, uh, we're about to come into the, moving into the perfect time of year. So, a plum yeah, Goza. Go, go, that's, Goza. Tell us about the plum uh, element. Is it yellow plums? Um, yeah, well, uh, it was yeah it's funny um uh, it was yellow plums last year <laughs> okay um uh yeah given basic basically like it's funny like it's come it's come up quite a bit the you know hashtag global supply chain oh yeah crisis or, or whatnot but um yeah so last year it was golden plums and then this year it's more of a, a blush plums yeah okay um, so is that mean it's so, What's a blush plum? More, yeah, it's more, uh, well, more, more of a pink color. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Love it. Yeah. 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 Um, perfect. So, so yeah, tell us this is 4%. Yeah, it so it's... A, yeah. 4%. So what's, you know, what's different about this is that we're trying to, yeah, trying to make it, um, low calorie, oh, low carb as well. Yeah. So the color, the color is actually a lot more fun this year. I'd say, you know, more last year it was more of a, hazy yellow kind of a color um it's it's nice the, yeah the colorful ones they they obviously like stand out in the glass yeah of course yeah the um color is beautiful like it's like a nice opaque kind of like guava juice yeah i would say yeah and so there's lots of um lots of plum what's interesting if you yeah we have our um we could we have, with the nutritional panel and the ingredient deck you'll see on the on the can there um plum is actually the second most uh second basic biggest ingredient after water wow um, so there's a lot of more, plums in here. yeah there's more plums in there than than malt basically yeah wow and um, um is this a summer thing or is it like year-round thing uh it is yeah it's it's more of a summer thing we we kind of it you know kind of lingered a bit around a bit nice. um into the fall but yeah um so so yeah you know it's got a nice nice little bit of salt um to it to bring out that those rose fruit flavors um and you know as far as the sourness level goes it's you know it's not gonna not gonna melt your tongue off you're not no. gonna have to do a shot of pepto bismol or something <laughs> after you <laughs> after you drink it yeah but it is you know it's it's sour it scratches it scratches that itch um for sure no it's um it's super subtle and i guess it's also the um in the 100 calories uh zone which is tons of flavor for such a low amount of calories here um the salt is like pretty like it's clearly there but it's not like yeah. super in your face either like it's definitely a clearly yeah, a goza sure. but it's like it's very approachable um which is kind of coming yeah for sure for yeah, yeah, it doesn't have that burn to it or whatever that you might mm. get with uh, with too much salt. Yeah, mm. a nice little yeah, creamy so body. Have... Yeah, yeah, totally. No, yeah, decent, decent body. Some nice um, wheat malt and stuff in there to kind of enhance that. Um, yeah, it works really well. This the all of it together. I imagine uh, what what's the response to like a, a beer like it goes that even though literally it's like a historical style. I imagine that maybe some of the um, you know folks who are a bit newer to beer might not uh, have been super familiar with something like this. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. So that's why you know we have like session sour on there to kind of give people a bit of a you know no idea heads what up, it is. A, a heads up on what it what it might taste like. Um, you know, that's another thing too. We, we talked about maybe how, you know, how saisons or imperial stouts or whatnot are, are, you know, not as well received here. I would say the same thing kind of goes for sour beers. Um, 
another, you know, big trend in, in craft beer where, yes. you know, pe- breweries are doing sour beers, but again, they're not doing them in, in you know, big quantities. Like we'll do, no. you know, we're kind of doing two sours this year. We have our watermelon sour and we have the plum sour and other breweries are kind of in a similar boat. Um, again, you know, you might see some places that maybe put out a new sour beer every month or every couple of weeks or, or, or whatnot, but, um, just with our, you know, smaller, smaller market, um, this doesn't, they just don't really work or they work better in the summer when there's a bit more of a influx of tourists around. Mm, yeah. I can, I can see that as well. And particularly like, I guess it makes sense. Essentially I imagine PE as a mostly, uh, excuse my ignorance, like a beach kind of people go there for that sort of ocean yeah. vacay. Right. So then all yeah, of totally. these, yeah. that's their kind of vibe. Okay. So the, all of these like crushable beers are very, very much in line with, um, with what you would expect. I kind of imagine you go to a beach town and want to drink a 12% Imperial stout, you know? <laughs> no, no, totally. It's, yeah. it, it's yeah. when you consider the actual environment, cause I feel like environment and community play a, a large role into, um, you know, what a brewery is going to make. And I imagine like as a drinker yourself, and as a brewer, you you probably like you you've essentially said that you're into kind of everything. Like nothing's really off limits. But when yeah. you're actually making a business, because brewing a beer is a you know essentially a business decision. So you do yeah. have to make the right thing to be like you know you can go and make these stouts all that you want, but if people don't want to come to the beach town to drink them, then you know it's probably not the smartest business decision. Like you can you know you can swing it here and there. So yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's interesting how all of those things kind of align to kind of. I was gonna say dictate. I guess it kind of is dictating. You know what what you want because you obviously have control. So you could be like, I'm gonna yeah. turn this community onto this style right now, and I imagine that's probably something that you've done as well as you know. Yeah, their palette. I would. I mean, I wouldn't give ourselves all the credit, but I said, you know, I said we're you know we're well known for for IPAs, but I would you know I would say that we were one you know the the leaders in bringing different types of IPAs to the to market for sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not the best, but you know, maybe like the first in, in some respects, you know, maybe, maybe the right. best in some regards, but not, not every beer, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, yeah. Right. Be, be real about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like IPAs or even, you know, like the, like the barrel aged Imperial lager or whatever that we, that we did, like it was a like chocolate salted imperial lager we call it yeah that's awesome sort of like a barrel aged stout kind of thing but like people people still there's people there's a uh, a vocal minority i guess we'll say of people that still um talk about that beer and ask for that beer but there's only it's only there's only like three or five people kind of thing um, they're excited and they about really it. Liked it right yeah are you, are you they're really- excited about it it took like it took almost a year to sell through all the bottles kind of thing so um, all right so it's not really worth not, you not a great business decision to no. yeah could you yeah. i mean at and least it's hard for, yeah could you yeah, do like a small match involved. yeah yeah we i mean yeah we we talked about that and and whatnot um one thing that's kind of going on within the brewery too is with um with the libras um is that they are you know they're 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 low alcohol and alcohol is like sort of a, you know, a natural preservative in, in beverages too. And so, um, we kind of got, get worried about getting into, you know, wild beers or barrel aged beers or or whatnot while we're still, um, you know, all in on the Libras, we wouldn't want to see any kind of like, you know, cross contamination with, uh, with wild yeast or, or fresh or, or, or whatnot. So, that's kind of another thing that sort of naturally happened with, you know, migrating away from some of those um, beer styles. That makes sense. Um, you still, I imagine that the Libra is probably quite large um, batches or at least they're pretty, you, you're kind of pumping it out at this point. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like half our, you know, it's half of our <clears throat> production right now. Shit. So, I mean, that's um, amazing. Could you move them or yeah. would there be plans to move to its own dedicated space for that? Even if there's not yeah. like a tap room, cause you could have like a production facility that's outside of upstreet to yeah. then free it back up to do 
whatever else you want to do there whilst running Libra yeah. exclusively from another spot. No, totally. Yeah, like we're talking about that, and it'll probably it'll probably happen within within the next couple of years. Um, we're doing one more tank expansion this year. We have some you know new tanks coming in June and July, um, ninety barrel tanks, and that'll nice. be um, yeah that'll be our last expansion. There's no more physical space. Right. <laughs> so then you tap down in there, and then you know I guess as this brand grows, because it's like you 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 are aggressively growing this brand um and yeah. rightly so because it's so fire and it's winning awards and there's a, such a shit ton of potential for something like this because it's like now you've opened yourselves up rather than with beer where you are governmentally or bureaucratically restricted when it comes to yeah. libra you essentially are not you've got the whole country and i imagine that there's probably potential in the u.s and, and beyond um, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So we're trying, you know, we're, we're, we are aggressively, you know, growing. We have a, um, a great director of sales, um, Deb and, and yeah, she's chasing, chasing down leads, um, every day, um, just to try to, you know, try to get it into as many, as many stores as, as possible, um, and grow it as, as fast as we can. Um, and, and yeah, we are, we're available in every province now which, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of, a whole, a whole lot of craft breweries that, that can say they have availability in, in every province. Um, that's so that's pretty special, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's very cool. And it's sort of, Libra still has the Street logo on it. So whilst it's a, technically it's its own beast, it's still growing the, the parent brand, uh, at yeah. the same token. And no, they're, yeah they're helping each other for sure mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like li like libra helped ruby social get into the lcbo for sure there you go and it's like that's what yeah. got me like i got i spoke to someone about libra and that made me familiar with upstream so it's it's a uh, i don't know i think it's a, it's just like it's a really cool strategy and um i've spoken to other breweries about it even just about taking a um, a brand, say like you know Dominion City in Ottawa have their city seltzer. They, they just started a brand very similar way that you guys did, um, in and it's just carbonated water and natural flavors type yeah. of thing. Super simple, but they've really like tripled down on it. It's its own thing. They got merch and vans and all that type of stuff, and that's essentially yeah. seen. You do the same with Libra. And I think not everyone has the taste for this. Not everyone really wants to start a whole other brand. They might just want to be like, oh, ooh, excuse me, I'll do one soda. I'll, I'll do a a non-alcoholic under my existing brand. Um, but it's uh, it's like, I feel like if you, the, the, the potential with this is just immense as far as, you know, what, no. what you can do with it by doubling yeah. down in the way that you've done it. No, for sure. I would say, you know, we're both like Mitch and I are, you know, pretty, pretty adventurous and, and ambitious and, and yeah, we want to, do, we want to keep, keep growing it. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's not even just us anymore too. We have this, a huge team of, of, um, really, um, amazing talented people that we're, that we're working with, um, you know, on the, on the sales side and, brewing staff we're you know hire, hiring two new brewers this year we'll be up to up to four brewers and you know at times it's just been it's just been me so it's a you know right. lots lots of growth yeah yeah and that's awesome uh, does that come from libra or just come from the brand growing in and of itself uh it's it's both yeah a lot a lot of the growth is is coming from yeah a lot of the growth is coming from libra but <clears throat> there's also a lot there's lots of benefits too like to that that's you know improving um the quality on our other beers Obviously. too that's yeah. sick man it's really cool this is this is really really fantastic so then to, to sort of take it home you know what what can you say that's coming next i know you sort of spoke about a few things that you're working on with with libra obviously you're expanding there you got the lcbo in mid-may for both the libra pale ale and the ruby social uh strawberry rhubarb uh, wit um what else you got coming up that the people need to know about or that you're excited about uh for, for either brand yeah I, w I mean i would say i think um you know one thing too like we're talking you know talking about availabilities or beers we, we will have a an online store soon um launching for for our upstreet beers as well that you know people um 
anywhere in the in the country will be able to order our beers online. Um, it, it should be coming hopefully by the by the end of May. Um, on that, so that's you know that that's pretty exciting too. Um, awesome. And 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 yeah, what's I guess what's exciting me is is um, yeah, just like you know, gr growing our growing our team, um, and that's you know, for, that's one of the most enjoyable things too is just you know, adding adding more people um, to the group and you know, new developing new like lifelong friendships with you know pe um, people that never really would have you know, never really would have met otherwise kind of, kind of thing. Um, so that's that's a lot of fun and um, and yeah, just getting getting Libra getting Libra out there and just being, you know, having a, having a national brand is just, you know, really, really cool. Um, something we didn't talk about before too, is that like with the Libras, yeah, we have this um, amazing partnership now with uh, Serena Ryder. Um, uh, so, you know, really cool, like, a, you know, Juno award winning um, musician um, and partnering with her on the, on the Libra, um, you know, for her me mental health um, and, and wellness is a, you know, really big part of what, what she's doing. So, um, Libra really, you know, fit in well, um, with that. Um, and we are actually, uh, giving back, uh, 1% of all of our, um, proceeds of, of Libra to her, um, art house foundation. So that's, that's pretty fun. Yeah. That's great. And then we, yeah. And then on the upstreet side, we also have our, um, do good foundation, uh, or do-gooder foundation that we, that we call it that's sort of more um more locally focused i guess we'll say with our initiatives yeah that's great man. yeah so just like continuing to grow and, and giving back and you know another thing that that's fun that that comes with having a bigger team is that um we can work on some bigger projects so we've just sort of actually started a, a net zero um committee with uh different people within the company so um you know, sort of working on, you know, measuring our, our energy usage and, and looking for ways to, to conserve and, and ways to, to offset that as, as well. Um, if it's, you know, a CO2 recapture system or planting trees to, you know, offset the, the footprint that the, um, and the impact that the, the brewery is having. So um, these are things that only kind of become possible as you, you know, get, get to a certain size. That's awesome, man. Well, it's, it yeah. really sounds like like giving back is is super key. Being that you're already the the B Corp, and then you've got the the other initiatives that you just mentioned uh, alongside it. Yeah. So it's like it's cool to see see a company you know live and breathe their uh, you know their intentions, their 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 real vision. So it's that's great, man. It sounds like you guys have just got some real cool stuff happening and um, tons of potential. And I imagine we should we should definitely do this again, like next like this time next year type of thing i imagine so yeah. much would have, would have changed um uh yeah you know, with with both brands I'd yeah yeah i love that yeah yeah this yeah. is this is super yeah. cool man um i really appreciate your time dude this has been uh really enlightening and uh i love what you're doing across the board and i appreciate this is this is super fun uh where can everybody find upstreet and libra uh online yeah so uh you can find upstreet at upstreet.ca and you can find libra at drinklibra.ca i think it's drink libra for the social and it, is it upstreet brewing for the social as well yeah yep yeah that's right yeah upstreet brewing so Perfect. yeah find us find us on instagram yeah <laughs> instagram everywhere if you're in ontario uh make sure mid-may grab the pale ale and grab the ruby social um from the lcbo and I'm going to take yeah. the screenshot now for the thumbnail. So do you want to maybe uh, hold up a, a couple of cans there? Yeah, I sure. I can get three of these. All, but... Yeah. 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 How many? Yeah. Whatever you can get. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. You ready? Around. Sorry. Oh. Just a second. It's like, it's hard, right? It is. Yeah. It's a mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I hope you stick around. I'll, I'm going to wrap this up and then we'll finish up the call yeah. uh, just once we get off. But once yeah. again, bro, thank you again for, for hanging out. This has been really cool. 
Uh, everybody, thank you for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, and hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media everywhere at BAOS Podcast. Check out the long form audio. We go, well, let's say go live. We drop the episodes every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tons of stuff coming up. Hit that five star on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You know the vibes. Guys, thank you again. Hoagie, you're a champion. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.